plan is going to be a really, really conservative game plan. Yeah. That's why I think the score is Just hold on to the ball. Just secure, secure the ball. Hey, I know. Five points, guys. Five, five points. points. Five points. Five five points. Fingers, <laughs> palm, forearm, bicep. Chest. There you go. Fun Easy. fact, the home it. team has won each of these games the last five years. BYU is the home team. It's in our favor. There you go. That's it for our show tonight. For Blaine Fowler, David Nixon, Brian Logan, and all of us at BYU TV Sports, I am Spencer Linton. We will see you Friday night for BYU and Boise State. And, of course, Tuesday for more AFR on BYU TV. The Kalani Sataki Show starts now. Coming up on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, we look back on a hard luck loss in Logan and ahead to Friday Night Lights with Boise State. Plus, we address the Cougars quarterback quandary. And rookie lineman Kairos Tonga joins us here in Studio C, where BYU Football with Kalani Sitake starts now. Sitake wants no part of the sideline. Look, he'll spin and come back in just to try and run somebody over. Open is Sitake, wide open. What's Kalani Sitake? What a nice job on Sherrod Newby. BYU wins it for Lavelle Edwards. Kalani Satake as the new football coach at BYU. It's great to be back home. The kick is on its way. It is gone. It is gone. It's the Cougars have it. I'm very lucky to be coaching these young men. And uh, he's going to go. He's going to go. Yes, he will. Micah Hanneman in his way to the end zone. That's a touchdown. Goes end zone looking for Bo Tanner. It is caught. It's a touchdown. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Presented by Ken Garf Orr. With your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome back inside the BYU Broadcasting Building in Provo for another edition of our weekly show that brings the head coach of the Cougars right to you for some FaceTime and one-on-one -on -one time, too. And if you'd like to be in our studio audience like these good folks next week, request your free seats next Monday, 1 o'clock Eastern, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, by clicking the link at byucougars.com slash show. And as always, we invite you to be a part of tonight's conversation on Twitter using the hashtag show. Send us your questions for Coach Satake or our guest, Kairos Tonga. Your contributions may make it on the air this evening. Now, to get tonight's show on the road, please welcome in and welcome back the head coach of the Cougars, Kalani Sitake. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Oh, great show. That's great. Do you guys know it was, it was a, a show with me? <laughs> Where you're expecting, like, Studio C to show up and <laughs> do a skit. But, uh, no, thank you for being here. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. It means you, a lot. Awesome. It's good to have you all here, by the yeah. way. Great show, a great show and a great crowd tonight. And uh, <laughs> hope the good vibes continue Friday night with you guys. Yeah, I mean, we've had great preparation, good practices, and so... Um, Feeling really good about this Friday, and then uh, just want to get to the next game and just get getting sick of this feeling of losing, you know. So uh, I know everybody feels the same way too. There's a lot of people nodding their heads, and so um, <laughs> you know, let's, let's get this win on Friday and, and uh, with our with our fans right there watching us. Second straight Friday night game for you guys. You were in Logan last week, and uh, we talked about a post game. There were a lot of things that you liked. A lot of good things happened. It was tough to overcome uh, the turnovers that uh, kind of plagued BYU that night that kind of undid some of the good things that were done. Yeah, and there were other mistakes. I mean, I think the, the penalties at, at um, the wrong times kind of hurt our, our, our uh, get some points off. I mean, I remember we're on the one yard line, get a holding call, and it backs us up. And so uh, just a lot of mistakes that we couldn't overcome, and that's um, that's, that's my job to make sure that we don't make those mistakes. And we had, uh, you know, just bad uh, op bad uh, turnovers when, when we were we felt like we were getting things rolling, and we felt good about the team and, and the run game. And um, you know, just sad that we had those three fumbles. I mean, that those hurt hurt our drives. And after you know, not fumbling all year long or the first four games, and so it's really. Uh, Bad that we did that, but we've got to fix it and uh, make sure it doesn't show up again. That's the thing. It was uh, not an issue, uh, at least with the fumbles, until Friday night. And that's kind of a, a fluky bounce that results in a, in a pick six the other way. And it's just tough to, to win a game at minus six, as you know. And uh, the Aggies, to their, uh, to their credit, uh, took advantage of the opportunities given them. And, and there were a few. 
Yeah, just bad decisions on some of it, and, and um, you know, I think I think our defense can can create some some um, you know some disruption and get some turnovers themselves. But uh, we can't put them in bad spots and, and give them, give the uh, the opponent short fields. And, and and our defense is good, but we're not that good where we can. Um, you know, I, someone told me that we had uh, we've given up we gave up 20 points without without any yards on our defense. That's that's not good. And, they, and so it's it's really tough. But I'm Give a lot of credit for those guys keeping their heads up and not pointing fingers and, and looking at ways that they could be better as a unit. Um, that means a lot for coaching staff with a defensive leaders take take the initiative of just hey let's get, let's make sure we're doing everything perfectly on our end before we can even look to the other side. And obviously the guys on offense want to fix the issues and you know the issues that we asked before were to sustain drives and get yards and get points on the board and. We're doing that now. It's like let's not turn the ball over. It's just so many things that get in the way and make mistakes. And so that the the problem is that we made mistakes. And we but the the good thing is that we know how to fix them and and we know what what cost us the game. But I, but I don't want to be disrespectful of Utah State because they they caused those three turnovers, you know, and um, they made those things happen. And, and uh, we need to protect the football more if if we want a, a better shot of winning. You were leading 21-7, then 21-14, driving with Bo Hodge. Uh, then he gets knocked out of the game after taking a hit in the second quarter, and the tone of the game appeared to change when uh, when Bo left the game. Yeah, we felt great with our scheme. We felt good with how things are going, and um, you know, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of reps that you can work with your um, with with all the quarterbacks, and so um, you know, Coy got put, got put in, a, in, a, in a tough situation. But um, as we started running the ball a little bit more, we, when we got uh, behind a little bit, we had to rely on on uh, our quarterback throwing the ball, and, and uh, he wasn't able to deliver and and cost us some more points, but also cost us some turnovers. And that's um, you know we expect more from our offense, and especially from the quarterback position. And Coy feels terrible about it, but the uh, only way you can fix things and is to go to work. That's the only way I know how, and that's the only way this coaching staff and this this uh, team knows how to is just go to work. And uh, you know we've been back at it and. Uh, we now have another opportunity to play on, on, on Friday and, and to make it better. And so that's what we're looking forward to. You mentioned the word disruption a minute ago, and, and uh, your defense in Logan was rather disruptive. There's a stat called Havoc Rate, and it was up around 20%, which is a pretty good number. You have a different way of looking at things in which an even higher number was produced. Uh, they scored, but you, like you mentioned, scored points without having to, sc uh, having to gain yards. And the defense did things like this with uh, Micah Hanneman making a really nice play. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at the... Um, the line of scrimmage, you know, you, you, I thought we did a good job uh, defending the run, uh, which caused them, you know, we forced them to, th to throw the ball a little bit. And I think we mentioned before that if we want sacks, we need to we need to um, stop the run and, and put teams in throwing uh, situations. And uh, I thought we were able to get some sacks. I don't, I don't remember how many we got, Four. but but you know, we'd like to get more than that and, and um, have a little bit more of a presence up front. I think we did a good job. With the run game, we did. It wasn't um, out of this world, you know. But it was under three yards per rush, though. Yeah, right. and then, and but we gave up some chunk yardage and some plays, and and uh, and a lot of that can be fixed with 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 uh, you know with our guys just being assignment sound and and um, you know, with and with our coaches. And but I, I I hate to pick on guys when when you kind of put them in bad situations and you put the defense in short fields, it becomes really difficult. So um, nobody's pointing the the finger. We just got to got to get things fixed as a unit. And obviously the offense knows what they need to get fixed and got to get some guys healthy and hopefully we, we can get that done this week. Well, here we are at uh, one and four, eight games left in your regular season now as we get into October. Yeah, not, not where we thought we would be, and, but um, yeah, I, I think we've been, I, unfortunately as a coach, we've, I've been in positions where you had your back against the wall and, and uh, you have two choices, you know, and we're going to fight our way through this and, and, and make it better and, and uh, Get our fans cheering again. That's 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 what the main emphasis for our guys. Just get get the ball rolling and and have things click in and get some momentum and and find a way to get a win. And you're at home and there's no better place to do it than in front of your home fans here on a Friday night. Exactly, late Friday night, you know. So um, uh, you know we get we get the fan support and and we've been feeling a lot of the great support from our fans. Appreciate them showing the love to our players, and our program, and our coaches. And so uh, you know the the one thing I know the I know there's fans that have been critical of it. That's okay. Uh, I've said before I don't, I don't I don't tell the fans how to how to cheer. My job is to make sure that we're if we're doing well, everybody's in the same. They're all united cheering. So that's, a, that's what we're trying to get done. 
All right, we'll look ahead to Boise State coming up in just a second. We're taking our first break, and as we do, we want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the residence in Marriott in Provo. When we come back, a look ahead to a visit from the Boise State Broncos. This is BYU Football with Kamabi Sitake. Hi, I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV Sports. Each season, we invite companies like yours to be a part of the BYU brand, aligning your business with respected academics and athletics. Becoming a corporate partner means you'll benefit from showcasing your products and services with game day signage, social media, radio, and TV campaigns. Whether on the field, in the stands, or on the air, BYU's here to help your brand grow. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. I went to BYU with the intention of finishing my degree. Along the way, things got a little bit busy. I always had that idea that I was going to go back, but as a non-traditional student, I just felt that uh, that opportunity was not going to happen until I explored what BGS really offered. The BGS program gave me more flexibility and gave me the education that I wanted. As I was walking to the podium, it uh, was almost surreal. I don't regret getting my degree through BGS. If you have symptoms such as depression, fatigue, headaches, or an inability to concentrate, you may have low thyroid caused by Hashimoto's disease. We're trained in blood chemistry. We really understand how to look for imbalances in the simple blood test. And once we can identify what those are, then we can customize a course of treatment. Our biggest goal is that we can really teach and educate these patients. Red River Health and Wellness can help with a treatment plan remotely or at any one of our locations. My parents always said to take care of school because school is going to take care of me in the long run. I always wanted to become a dentist since I was a little kid. The plan is to become a dentist if the whole NFL dream doesn't come to fruition, but I've always had the dream of playing in the National Football League. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Nissan of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Satake. We're really appreciative of the True Blue fans joining us in Studio C every week. We invite you to be a part of our studio audience next week right here on the show. Some great Boise State moments we saw there. Well, with uh, Tanner Mangum and uh, Bo Hodge on the mend right now, uh, Coach, where do we stand right now at the quarterback spot? Well, so we had, obviously, you know, Coy was, was uh, the, the quarterback that stepped in the Utah State game, but we've been able to work. Um, you know, we're looking at still using Cody Wilstead and, and uh, Joe Critchlow. Uh, what would be nice if they can redshirt because those guys just got home from missions and they're still, um, still working on some things, but... Um, very capable throwers. Um, then you know, there's a, still a chance that Tanner could play this week. So, um, yeah, I, you probably know what I'm what I'm rooting for. And and if Tanner can go, then he'll be the guy. And if not, then one of those other guys will step in. And and we've tried to you know you, utilize the practice reps for in order for us to get the right guy in there ready to play. And probably Bo more than likely will will not be able to play. And that's trying to protect him and, and, and his health. So that's one thing I won't jeopardize our players and, and their health to win a game. So Tanner got hurt in the Utah game. So it'll be almost four weeks before the Boise State comes along. Has his progress been good enough? Do you think there's a shot he gets cleared to go? Yeah, I think, I think the main thing is to get practice time, and that's for all our players, you know. And I think especially at quarterback, the timing and the throwing and just being able to work with the offensive group is, is it's something that you need to work. You need to have quality reps and – um, specifically for the, for the quarterback position. And so we feel good. You can read kind of in between the lines. We feel good about Tanner and where he's at right now on a, on a Tuesday. And so he still has Wednesday, Thursday to heal up and Friday all day until 8 o'clock, 8.17 mm -hmm. or 20 or whenever the kickoff <laughs> is. So um, it's one of those... I don't know if you're old enough, but you remember the Coach episode, the TV show Coach? There's like a pineapple bowl where they rolled out the guy in, on the wheelchair. We may do that just to, <laughs> just to see and play, throw everybody off. But um, I think um, if, if he progresses, then Tanner will be the guy. If not, then 
we will go go to someone else. So a few more QBs than normal might be getting snaps in practice this week, I guess. Yeah, and then yeah. and then trying to, um, I mean, they're all meeting with 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 Ty, and and they're all working. Our, all those guys are capable of running the program and running certain types of our offensive scheme uh, because we did that early in fall camp, and so. Um, but the, the the we would like to redshirt those freshmen, especially the return missionaries. But last time we threw out a return missionary before he was ready, it worked out well for for that season. So yeah, um, maybe it was that's, Tanner. Yeah, so, maybe yeah. that's the way we'll go. We'll see. But we feel good about the talent there. We just. Uh, maybe maybe some of these guys will get a chance earlier than they, they anticipated. Like you said, post game uh, in Logan, uh, it's Boise, so Tanner, you know, really wants to get in this game. He's from around there, and it's a big deal for him. Yeah, exactly, and and that's, I mean, he he's excited to play in this game, and that's what he's trying to try to do, and you know, just hope it all happens. Yeah. Well, how about Boise? They come in two and two, uh, and, and like you, kind of looking to get things back on track. It's a great regional rivalry, mm -hmm. and they look forward to it that way as well. And, and usually, no matter what happens in the game, the games tend to be pretty competitive and close at the end. Uh, how about having Boise on the schedule every year? What's going to be a 12-year series going into the next decade here? Well, really good program, and, and we have a lot of respect for that, the team and, and their fan base, you know. And so, and the fact that we're close to each other. Yeah, you know, and, and so it's nice to have them here, and, and um, you know, hopefully the 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 uh, the home the home trend continues. You know, that that's what it's it's been like, and been close games last year. We obviously lost the game. You know, on, on uh, we had a chance to win it with a field goal, and and uh, this year, you know, we were looking forward to playing this game. Last year, we were without Jamal, and this year we'll be without Jamal again too. So, <laughs> uh, you know, we'll just be ready to ready to play, and, and we feel good about. I mean, there's some, there's a lot of positives that we saw in uh, last week's game, and um, you know, I thought we ran the ball well. I thought I felt really comfortable with our, our O-line, D-line um, up front in the trenches, and, and um, it's just unfortunate that we we weren't able to get that win. But um, against a, a team that's you know that's just as good as 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 coach as Utah State, you can't make those mistakes and expect to win those games easily. And uh, you know, we'll, let's just get a better chance of winning by. Limiting our mistakes and, and playing and having fun and getting out there in front of our fans. I think that'll be a huge plus for us being at home. Both teams want to win as badly as the other. Uh, they've been sitting on a bye week after a tough loss. You've had a few losses in a row. So I think both teams look to this game as, uh, you know, for what's going to come next, a, a pretty big turnaround game. Both sides can see it that way. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure they have some stuff up their sleeve with, the, with extra time in, in the bye week. And, you know, we had we had a bye as well. So we were able to do some stuff too. So we'll see what happens in this game. And, Feel good about our, our preparation. We feel good about our scheme going into this game, and and uh, feel really good about all three phases. So I just just get out there and, and play this game and see what happens. Coming up after the break, we're going to bring in uh, Kairos Tonga, uh, one of your uh, big defensive linemen. He's been kind of a rookie revelation for you. He's, he's going to be tremendous. Yeah, and then just uh, another guy that just came up from his mission not long ago, and he's big and he uh, he's physical and uh, just really really fortunate to have him on our team. I've I've, I've known him since he was. Uh, you know, since he was a young teenager, and so um, just just glad that he's doing some great things and served a great mission, and uh, hopefully he's you know he's only a freshman for us, so looking forward to him owning the line of scrimmage for a long time. All right, Kairos Tonga is coming up next as we head to break at Ken Garf Honda of Orem, a brand new dealership. Come see their new showroom floor located on University Parkway. Ken Garf Honda of Orem, we hear Cougs. After the break, the freshman lineman from West Valley, Kairos Tonga, is our guest here in Studio C. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Are you preparing? because of natural disasters or for a power outage or for economic uncertainties like a job loss. Of all the reasons you prepare, perhaps the most important is you prepare because you care. Emergency Essentials, helping families prepare for over 30 years. Learn more at BePrepared.com. 
Next time on the story trek, I randomly end up on the Jersey Shore, where I wonder if anybody's going to talk to me. Hi there, how are you? Surprise, surprise. And I'm asked to leave one particular town. Unfortunately, yeah, you are gonna, after this point, you're gonna have to Yeah. Stop. Turns out, we may have set the record for the number of stories we get. We're lucky. You know, I mean, it's hard to say, but we are. You just gotta be thankful to wake up every morning. Join me for the story trek from the Jersey Shore on BYU TV. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU St. Mary's women's soccer game. Live Saturday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV. Your home for Cougar sports. Balance restore. I'm supposed to look super hot. <laughs> Ken Myers on first and 20. Steps up, drops. It's Tunga who makes a stop. The true freshman from West Valley, Utah. Yeah, Big but... future for BYU. <laughs> Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Satake with your host, Greg Rubel. Welcome back inside Studio C at BYU Team. Reminder. Use the hashtag Satake Show to get your submission in during our Q&A sessions coming up later in the show. Well, at Granger High School, he played both sides of the ball and a different kind of ball, rugby. Served a mission to Wichita, Kansas, home of the Shockers. At BYU, his freshman season by no means is a shocker, but it is pleasantly surprising by just how good Kyrus Tonga has been in his rookie season with the Cougars. Please welcome to Studio C for the first time, Kyrus Tonga. <laughs> You. Good, good to see you. They said that this chair will hold you. <laughs> all right, yeah. There we go. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Kyrus, welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you. It is awesome to have you here in Studio C. Uh, I don't know where to start with you. I, I you know, Kalani just said that uh, uh, when you got home from your mission to Wichita, yeah. uh, he said he said your homecoming was the most that a lot of people had heard you speak at one time in a long time. <laughs> are, you, are you kind of a naturally shy guy that way? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah. Tell us about uh, your life uh, growing up. Um, so I'm, I'm originally from Hawaii, but I moved around uh, growing up uh, with my family, and I grew up in West Valley City, Utah. So uh, from there, I just, from Little League, just playing football in high school, and then eventually go on my mission and come back. So in the growing up part of life, uh, when did you realize that sports was something that you liked or took to? And when did football kind of fall into the mix as maybe your favorite, if it was your favorite? Yeah, it was when I first moved to Utah. Uh, I was about in sixth grade. Um, they, they asked me if I wanted to play football. So I never played football before. So the coach took me and uh, taught me how to play. And from then, it's been my favorite sport. I, now, what had you been playing before football? Uh, Nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mentioned rugby was somewhere in there too. Was there some rugby for you? Oh yeah, I, yeah. When I first moved to Utah, yeah, I started playing rugby as well. So. So, what do you like, the padded sport or the non-padded sport better? I like the padded sport. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's fun. Kalani, what is it? Rugby guys, generally speaking, make pretty good football players just by their mentality, don't they? Yeah, I mean, Kyrus was a tight end in high school, and I remember telling him a long time ago that he would be a D tackle. Remember that? Yeah. And I think I was right. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, but, you know, he's very athletic and, and he's really humble and he's shy, but uh, just, just, I could tell he was athletic. He could move around he could, and he can run for a big guy. And that's when he weighed about 240. And so I don't know what he weighs now, but it's more than that. And he's, uh, <laughs> but he's really powerful and um, just, he's a great young man. And so it's been an honor for me to know him and recruit him and, I'm glad he's here with me at BYU and Provo and with us here in the studio. And that's uh, glad he's playing. He's doing a great job. You know, he hasn't been home long, um, but we've asked him to 
to play and, and uh, you know, just just get right into it. And, and he's done a great job, and he's he's gelled with the team, and he's perfect as a teammate. Kyrus, when do you recall first meeting this guy? Um, <laughs> in high school, my, my sophomore year. It was uh, legal, legal <laughs> recruiting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, he came in recruiting. Kalani was at Utah at that yes. time, right? Okay. Yes. He came in with uh, Coach Duyaki, and uh, from then we, we built uh, a, a great relationship. Uh, definitely has been uh, like more like a father figure in my life. So, uh, wise man. So, I, I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> what has he taught you? Um, from a, a lot of things, like um, especially with football, uh, there's more, more to life than just football. There's, um, there's things we need to do where we're not just football players, but we're, we're brothers. We're, uh, we're going to be fathers one day, and we're sons. And we need to uh, continue to, to keep that role uh, in our lives and, and teach it as well. You come from a big family, a smaller family. What was your family life like, Mike? I have uh, six siblings, so there's seven of us kids and a mom and a dad. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when, when it came time to think about uh, taking football to the next level and playing college, uh, what were your thoughts at that time as you were at Granger High School? Um, I was excited. Uh, I was really excited. Uh, definitely to play for uh, Coach Kalani and Coach Duyaki um, there at the University of Utah at the time. And so I, that's, where, that's where you first kind of committed to, right? Yeah. 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 And then uh, things changed and <laughs> I went on my mission and uh, found out they came to BYU. So it was a great fit. It was so, fun. So if they were there, you said you want to be there too? Yeah. 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 So. How about uh, mission service for you? Was that something you grew up thinking about doing or decided to later in life? Uh, how was that for you? Yeah, it wasn't until uh, about my senior year that I actually even thought about a mission. I wasn't very in, into the church very much, um, and my family uh, definitely helped pave the way for that. And I, I ended up serving a mission. I served in the Kansas Wichita mission, and I loved every second of it. Um, best part so far of my life is being able to serve a mission. When you found out uh, Kansas, Wichita, uh, what were your initial thoughts? And then once you got into it and finished up with it, what are your feelings for the good people of Kansas now? Yeah. So when I first got my call, my mom, she's a very spiritual person. And she told me, and it, usually I, I never doubt what she says. <laughs> uh, and she's like, oh, love, you're going to serve. Oh, she calls me love. She's like, love, you're going to serve in either Tonga or New Zealand, I feel it. I'm like, oh, yes. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, like, oh, okay, I'm going to New Zealand or Tonga. And I read my mission call and I, I read Kansas and it didn't hit me like my, my siblings were laughing and like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know where Kansas was. So, so I, I, I ended up going to Kansas and I enjoyed every second of it uh, from the people to my, my companions to my mission presidents. Uh, Mission Miles, I, I loved it. So, Kalani, as you look at him now, sitting at seeing the chair next to you, having seen him as a younger kid, knowing that he's been on a mission and back, how have you seen this guy kind of develop and grow? I'm so proud of him. Um, he's come a long way. So, he he, he knows, and, and uh, just proud of him to make a decision to go on a mission and and to serve with all his uh, with all his heart on the, in the mission field, and you know, it was just. Um, just this, this kid's been through a lot, and uh, he's doing so well right now, and just a great young man. And you know, I saw a lot of things in him potentially, um, not just the weight, but like uh, potential in, on the football field. <laughs> 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 I keep telling him I, I was right, you know, but but it was about his weight. But it's like what I know I'm right about is the, the type of person that he is inside, and. Um, type of things that he's going to do in the future, you know, and, and it's not just limited to football. He's got so many things other than football. He's got, don't get me wrong, he's a great talent on the football field, but that's just not even him. When it gets, when, when you're covering what Kyrus is all about, he's a great young man. He's going to be a great father, a great husband to somebody, some lucky lady. <laughs> and she may be a little blind, but she's going to be. Oh, <laughs> 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 she's, um, He's just, I'm just really excited about, about the, um, the adult that he's going to be, and I'm glad I get to watch him grow as a young man here in college. And Kalani says he's seen you go through a lot. Are you happy to be where you are right now alongside him? Um, I'm grateful to be here, so uh, I'm grateful.
Well, I know BYU fans are grateful that you're here, too. It's great to have you in studio, too. We'll take a break. After the break, you'll be live at number 95. The BYU football is No matter what stage you're at in life, you're always looking to take the next step forward. At Deseret First Credit Union, we want to take each and every next step with you. With low auto loan rates, you can be ready to see what's around every new corner. And amazing rates on home mortgages, so you can move up to something you've always dreamed of. Deseret First Credit Union, with you every financial step of the way. Membership and eligibility required. Equal housing lender. Moving your family doesn't have to be stressful. Not when you use Bailey's Moving and Storage. For 65 years, we've moved families, companies, and busy individuals like you across town and across the country. From planning to unpacking, families have trusted Bailey's for many years to be their partner every step of the way. Whether it's local, long distance, international, an office move, or more, be sure to begin with Bailey's. The official mover of BYU Athletics, Bailey's Moving and Storage. More than just a move. Being able to come here every day is something I look forward to. It really opened my eyes and something I'm really grateful for. The BYU TV Sports Post Game, Boise State versus BYU, Friday after the game on BYU TV. What is this hamburger? You mean hamburger? Oh, is that how you say it? Random acts. Nice pranks. I would have wasted all my days in a dream. Will Rubio in the flesh. I know I have never been so shocked in my life. stop to wonder if you might And now you're lying That is our show, ladies and gentlemen. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Honda of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. Always good to check in on our Cougars in the NFL. Kyle Van Noy getting it done as a linebacker with the Patriots. Jamal Williams is part of a now crowded backfield of Green Bay. It's Aaron Jones and Ty Montgomery in that mix. And Ezekiel Ansa, Ziggy. Sarfusi got his first NFL to tackle this past weekend for Baltimore against Pittsburgh. We're back in studio with uh, Kairos Tonga of the BYU defensive line. I see those NFL stats. We talk about Kairos. Is that something that you think about as being in your future down the line, as playing at the next level? Hopefully one day. So hopefully one day. I was talking with, uh, with Coach uh, Tuiaki the other day, and he's coached, uh, along with Coach Sataki, some good defensive linemen that are in the NFL. What do you think it takes to make it there? What do, they, what do the coaches tell you that will help you get there? Um, definitely hard work on the field and, and off the field. Uh, definitely with school and, and just like what I was saying in the beginning of uh, being not just a football player but a better person. So just all those around and hopefully that that will help me or help all of us get to the next level. How, have you, uh, how much have you learned from Coach Satake and Coach Tuiaki about the finer points of being a D-lineman? I learned a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot. Uh, the hockey every day is, is, is helping me correct things, and it's been fun to, to learn the new position and um, to, to play, play where I'm at. So. How close were you to a pick there on that play? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I'd touch the ball, honestly. <laughs> I just jumped. <laughs> uh, Coach, uh, Coach Itake, uh, E talks a lot about uh, how – how Kyrus here is still like he says he's learning. He's just learning the game still. Is that is that how accurate is that? And how much of it is really innate and makes him just a good defensive lineman for how he reacts to things naturally? Oh, he's he's got so much potential to, for growth. And um, I said this before about some of our other players, but he he's he's barely scratching the surface when it comes to his talent. I mean, this this young man is going to be really good. And the best thing about it is, is our the dynamic that Coach Tuyaki has in the defensive line room. They all work together, and he's got a lot of guys that are good mentors for him, not just the player, not just the coaches, but the players also included. And so it's a good D-line room, and I think um, there's, there's a lot of youth in there, but there's also some good veterans that will pass on the knowledge to these guys. And uh, Kyrus is there just soaking it up, and he's trying to 
get in better shape as we go through it uh, still. You know, he didn't have, uh, he wasn't here to, to train in the off season and do all the stuff that, that Nuu does with our guys, but he, he'll, he'll benefit from working hard right now until, you know, throughout the season. And he's done that already, and, and he's earning the, the right to be on the field even more. You said your mom calls you love. Yeah. Uh, what do your boys call you? What do your teammates call you? Oh, not love. <laughs> <laughs> just, just Kyrus. Just straight up Kyrus? Yeah, just no, Kyrus. no nicknames, crazy nicknames or otherwise for you? <laughs> uh, not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, who are some of your uh, uh, your best buds on the D line, or special teammates to you that you want to shout out? Um, I I love them all. Uh, play for the infamous D Rockers, like that's what the the name uh, they came up with with the D line, and it's been it's been fun to be around them and to to learn the game, and um, as the season goes on, to continue to learn and to grow. You guys have gotten better and learned and grown as a line in just three or four or five games here. Uh, where's the potential as a group? Do you think for this group by the time you're done this year? I think uh, we can we can definitely be up there with 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 one of the best. Um, like I, I like these these players, uh, these teammates of mine. They're they're hard workers and uh, they continue to put in the work every single day. Um, they never give up. Um, always have faith. So it's been. It's been good to, to be with them and to be around them. What kind of play is the most exciting for you to make on the field? What kind of play? Yeah. Like, what's your favorite play to make? I mean, people oh. say, is it sacking the quarterback? That's got to be the pinnacle, or is it something else? Um, shoot. I just, I just like being on the field. Uh, if it's running forward and touching the guy or it's trying to make a tackle, anything, like, I'm just... As Happy long as you're contributing. Field. Yeah, as long as I'm there. Well, he's pretty humble for a guy that really gets after it, Kalani, because he's made some big plays for you so far. Yeah, and a lot of what he does doesn't show up on the stats. As you can see, he takes up a lot of space, and, and he <laughs> causes, he, he draws more than, uh, you know, <coughs> teams and stuff like that. So um, sometimes his job is just to be a disruptor and cause havoc, and he's pretty good at that on the field, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. How did you feel about your Utah State game Friday night up there in Logan, personally? Uh, I, thought, I thought the defense, I, I thought, I, I had fun. It was, it was a fun game. We, didn't get the result, but it was it was fun to to, to get after them and to to play and have fun. The defense did a nice job, especially up front, uh, causing a lot of disruption. There you are dragging them down. Another tackle for loss. Nine tackles for loss. The BYU defense had uh, this past week in Logan. Didn't get the result, but I'm sure you think that the uh, the wins are coming, right? Yes, for sure. Boise State, how big for you is this game Friday night? It'll, it'll be fun to 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 beat them and to win, uh, but. We're definitely um, we're hoping for the best and working hard to to accomplish that. So. Can you take us a little bit into the into the collective mindset maybe of the team at one and four? You've had a few losses in a row of still staying positive and where you need to be, and, and what gives you confidence moving forward? Because you guys got to stay upbeat. Yeah, for sure. Um, and just like what I said, this this team is just full of faith. Um, there's there's no doubts. Uh, yeah, we. We're, we're one and four, but we're not looking at that anymore. We just continue to, to move forward, and um, every day is, is, is a, a stepping stone and a learning process for, for each and every one of us. So we're looking forward to Boise State. Or we're not looking past them. as will take, again, one at a time. Kalani, when you got Kyrus and the guys in the room Saturday morning, right after the Logan uh, experience, Utah State, what did you want them to hear from you? Well, I think, I mean, I was a little vocal on, on some of it, but, uh, but they, they needed a... They need to hear that we're way better than this, and and, and that it's got to you know as a collective group we got we have to find ways to win games, and um, and so everyone's got to do their part, and you know it, it, our guys they mean well. So, so I, I I talked to Ula and, and and he wanted to make more plays, and just you can't sacrifice the football trying to get an extra two yards, and and uh, and, and you just need to take calculated risks, but you don't have to put it all on yourself. So no one get one player on the team has to put it all on their shoulders. And we can all lift it, up, lift it together. And that's what the goal is. And, and also just play the game with gratitude and, and just be thankful that you get to play this game and that you have these wonderful fans and that you get to, you get to represent BYU and, and the church. And that's, uh, I think if they have that attitude, you know, they've been really great about it anyways. And, and the leaders of the team have taken over. And so I, I feel really comfortable with where we're at, considering we're one and four. Right? But, you know, we're going to stay positive and work through this and, and find ways to... to, to you know, one day look back at this and be like, man, I remember we're at that point where we've, you know, a lot of questions were out there, but the question is not, not on our, in our program, not in our locker room.
All right, let's go some Q&A for Kairos right now. We've got uh, Davis Parker here in Studio C. Davis, you're on with Kairos Tolga. All right. Um, what do you usually eat before a game? <laughs> usually eat. Um, <laughs> probably not, not good stuff, like chips. And, <laughs> uh, I drink a lot of Gatorade and water. <laughs> so, but, yeah, not, nothing too fancy, no protein. I should eat better, though. <laughs> what kind of chips are you eating? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite meal when it's like Sunday dinner or something like when you got, is it any, really in your wheelhouse? Uh, I like, in my culture, we eat a uh, horse. <laughs> uh, if, but yeah, or chicken. I like chicken. Yeah. 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 A little, a little more common there. Yeah. 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 How about folks, I want a hand for Kairos Tonga here tonight. Oh. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here at Ken Garfield, Thrive and Abroad, we're excited to announce Thank our you. new dealership opening its doors in November. Visit our new showroom on University Parkway. Ken Garf, we here to down the break. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. All the great things in life happen around great food. It's not just nourishing to your body, it's nourishing to your soul. Come into downtown Provo, see the amazing things that there are here, and you'll come again and again and again. Provo is so beautiful. I think that you'll find that when you come to Provo, there is something for everybody now. We've got a perfect recipe for success here. We've got good food, music, a good art, and we've got a lot of great culture here. So come and have some fun in Provo. Do you have any idea what's going on? We gotta go. You worry us, Jax. Your hatred for the humans is unrivaled. We need them. We must weaken them. And they will seek to overpower us. This Ezra is nothing but an organism. We are the human race, not them. We decide how we live, not them. The humans may have lost the war, but we'll both make it right. I'm Johnny Linehan. You're watching BYU TV Sports. They motion Simon in the backfield, takes the handoff, reverses to Hodge. Hodge on a throwback to Elbacker, makes the catch inside the 10, to the 5, into the end zone! Touchdown! Bring it out, Beckery! That was our exciting play of the game, presented by Nissan, a proud partner of the BYU Cougars. Nissan, innovation that excites. We are back. On BYU football with Kalani Satake here in Studio C at the BYU Broadcasting Building. And nice play Ty drew up there. Yeah, I mean, that's, we should have just ran it every play. <laughs> he, said he, had, he, said he, he said he had it in for the Wisconsin game. Didn't call it, but it's called Badger Special because it was supposed to be in for that game. Yeah, well, that makes sense why he called the Badger Special at the Utah State game. But <laughs> He said he didn't change the, the name for the Utah the Broncos Special coming up soon. <clears throat> yeah. Whatever gets you in the end zone. Yeah. All right, uh, every week, head coach the Cougars interacts with his team's fans, you folks, in studio and on social media. Let's get tonight's Q&A session rolling, and we start right here in our live studio audience with Twitter questions still to come. Clint Thompson, first up with Coach Clint. Hey, Coach, uh, what was your biggest takeaway defensively from the USU game? Uh, I like what we did at line scrimmage, limiting the runs, you know. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I thought we could have done more 
uh, with, with creating big plays. The problem is that we were just caught in short fields quite a bit and, and uh, with the turnovers happening. And I know our, our guys, I mean, if we're going to throw interceptions and fumble the ball, at least keep them so that our defense can get on the field and, and try to stop them. But um, defensively, those guys played hard. Even to the end, um, you know, we had to use our three timeouts to get the ball back. I think after they got the pick six, we were still down by 16. So it was two scores and two point, two point conversions. And so our defense went out there, and I give them a lot of credit. They battled, and they got the ball back, and, and then it, 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 it failed after that. But, I mean, they, they played uh, every time they, they had a chance to. They tried to get the ball back and try to get our, our offense in a good position. So I, I give them a lot of credit for fighting to the end. It was easy to just hang it up, and they just kept going. Now, you may already know this. A little trivia, though. Of the 13 turnovers you've had, to, uh, giveaways, 12 have been on your side of the field. Uh, the average line of scrimmage on those 12 turnovers is a 32-yard line, your own 32. So the short field thing it really does ring true. You've given you know, teams uh, a little you know, shorter distance to go than you'd like them to, clearly. Yeah, so let's, let's not do that. I mean, <laughs> you don't want to give any turno turnovers away, but I, at the same time, you know, we, we need to get on the other side of the, of, of, the, of the 50. And our defense is really good if you make them go, go 70, 80 yards, really good at, at um, and getting, getting the ball back for our offense. So, uh, that, that's the goal, but uh, there, there's a lot of things. Trust me, the defense, they know that there's a lot of things they can work on, and there, there's a lot of plays that they left out there and a lot of opportunities to get turnovers and disruptive plays, so hopefully they can get that done uh, this weekend. Okay, back to our studio audience. We have Aaron Robinson next up with Coach. Hey, Aaron. Hey, thanks for taking my question. Uh, this far into the season, which position group are you most pleased with and which position group do you feel like needs a little bit more work? Uh... Everything needs work, and so it's 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 we're never we're never going to sit there and say that we feel really comfortable with everything that's going on. There's always room to grow and room to improve, and so um, once you once you feel you've arrived, then you're in trouble. And so wh whether we win or lose, we're always looking to get get some uh, some type of improvement and to learn. I mean, nobody's played a game perfectly, and so until we can do that and say, hey, there's no no need for improvement, that's that's kind of the thing that we're going to be chasing, but. Uh, our coaching staff and our players, they're, they're always looking at ways to improve. And, but I've been really pleased with the guys' effort. The, the guys, the guys on, on our team play hard, you know, and, and um, they, they appreciate every second that they get on the field and they, they go at it 100%. And so uh, although we haven't got the, the results we want, um, it's not because of the lack of effort or, 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 uh, or passion on the field. Aaron, thanks for the question. Appreciate it. All right, more Q&A coming up next. Fans, looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's? Try Smith's Click List. Order online, then pick up curbside at the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com slash click list for details. More Q&A with Kalani straight ahead. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Hi, I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV Sports. Each season, we invite companies like yours to be a part of the BYU brand, aligning your business with respected academics and athletics. Becoming a corporate partner means you'll benefit from showcasing your products and services with game day signage, social media, radio, and TV campaigns. Whether on the field, in the stands, or on the air, BYU's here to help your brand grow. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Next time on the story trek, I randomly end up on the Jersey Shore, where I wonder if anybody's going to talk to me. Hi there, how are you? Surprise, surprise. And I'm asked to leave one particular town. Unfortunately, yeah, you are going to have to this point, you're going to have to Yeah. Stop. Turns out, we may have set the record for the number of stories we get. We're lucky. You know, I mean, it's hard to say, but we are. We just got to be thankful to wake up every morning. Join me for the story trek from the Jersey Shore on BYU TV. My name is Eric Dowdle. As an artist, I've been lucky enough to travel all over the world and meet some of the greatest and most interesting people. Spending time with the locals and learning their history allows me to discover the heart of each city. Each place has a unique story to tell, and I get to tell that story in a one-of-a-kind piece of art. I hope you'll join me on Painting the Town.
BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Volkswagen of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. All right, back inside Studio C for another segment of fan interaction with the Cougars head coach. You can use hashtag Satake Show to get your question in for Kalani. By the way, Kalani, I like happy Kalani and excited Kalani and scoring Kalani in those photos. Those are the ones I want to see. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, I, I wish they wouldn't take pictures of it, you know, because uh, I, I, I'm better on the radio. When you guys had this, so I did, oh, gosh, they, so they keep showing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're doing good. If you're happy, we're happy. It's a good way to embarrass my, my daughters and my son, so that's, <laughs> that'll work. <laughs> All right, we have a question. Uh, I think our studio question is coming up next from Zach Ford. Zach, you were on with Coach Satake. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, I just wanted to know why you pick the color hats you do for each game, like wearing navy against Wisconsin. Um, I, I, there's no real, no real reason behind it. I just kind of grab something that will – I just like wearing hats. They won't let me wear it really on the TV show because everyone wants to see my face, I guess. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I just I like, I like them. I like the royal. I, I'm more – Toward, lean towards a royal because it just attracts. I'm attracted to it, you know. Um, but whatever, whatever's there, and whatever people say looks good on me. I guess I wear. But um, I, that, that, there's no like rhyme or reason behind it. I just grab whatever's there, and make sure it's a BYU hat. Yeah, that, that's kind <laughs> yeah. of important. Can't be one of my Utah Jazz hats or anything. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that's, Zach, that's thanks pretty much question. it. Good question though. Yeah, and nice, uh, nice top he's got wearing. <laughs> uh, this next uh, question is from Twitter, and this is from at Kyra's Tonga. The question is, how do you think Kyra's Tonga did on the show tonight? <laughs> did Kyra's <laughs> ask that? <laughs> well, He's curious. Kyra's, Kyra's did great. The only, the only problem is there's a lot of scared horses out there. <laughs> whether, he, whether he rides them or eats them, it's bad news for all of them. <laughs> That's awesome. You are the man. Kyrus up there. He's hanging out at the back there. Kyrus, good to see you. Yeah, bear it on. <laughs> All right, uh, studio audience question. Brielle Paul. Hi, Brielle. Hi. So if you weren't a football coach, what would you want to be? A BYU fan. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. I, I, don't know. I, I, I think that's the only thing I'm good at. And being smart is doing that. And so if I were to uh, win the lottery, if I did play the lottery, <laughs> then I would, um, I would still try to find some place to coach football. I just love it, you know. So I just felt like I was meant to do that. And, and uh, it just feels really great being here, and probably because I'm a fan more than anything. But uh, just, yeah, I, I can't see myself doing anything else. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Twitter question, at Lincoln BYU alum. Twitter handle, what has the offense been doing to prepare for Boise State in the face of the quarterback injuries you've had? Well, I think trying to get the reps right, uh, the right reps with the right guys and, and then um, trying to get healthy. That's the, that's the key for our guys and, and not just in the quarterback position. There's other ones, but um, that's part of college football. You know, you have to adjust and, 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 and whether it's injuries or, or, or talent or whatever it is. But um, for us, um, our guys have been preparing. And there's been a focus on not turning the ball over and making good decisions overall. Not, I think if you focus on one thing, then it becomes a huge problem. And, and it's like, you know, you want the guys to be aggressive and everything. Turnovers happen. They just, hopefully we just got them all done in one game. That's, <laughs> uh, that's what I'm hoping, because there's a lot. I mean, the seven is a lot, and I, I just don't see that, uh, that type of uh, mistakes showing up again. And, and, but, you know, we, we need to be mindful of even when we're behind or we're doing well, of always taking care of the football and making sure that we don't put our, our team in a bad position, more than anything, trying to win the game. Hashtag Satake Show for your Twitter questions. Next question, at Andy Splats. After starting the season one and four, what are you telling your players right now to keep them focused on winning? Well, just be grateful for where they're at and be grateful for what they get to re represent and uh, just more about the sense of gratitude and just being thankful that they have great fans that, that are there to support them. So, um, you know, we obviously know that we've made mistakes and we haven't played our best, but we know what the answers are too, and, and we've, we're addressing them and trying to get them fixed. And uh, hopefully the, there's a sense of urgency to get it done this week. And I, I said that last week too, you know, and, and I thought we've improved, but 
we just need to improve and be great right away. That would be the goal, you know? So um, uh, I know there's a lot of guys that are impatient on our team and want to get great, but the best way to be really good is to, for you to do your job and nothing more. And I, I think if we focus on that, we trust each other, we'll be fine. But just also be grateful that you get to play at this great university and you get to play for a great program and with great fans. All right, studio audience and Cougar Nation, thanks for your questions. Back to wrap up this week's show on week six. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. We are back right after this. Game Day Promos helps BYU build the Cougar brand with customized promotional items. Blankets, flashlights, balls, almost anything really. To increase fan loyalty and team support. Businesses can do the same thing. Carefully selecting items that Game Day Promos can customize with any brand. The result? Gifts to reward customers. Licensed promotional product vendor for BYU. Game Day Promos. Beyond sports, beyond expectations. Her mother, gotta go. Thank you for watching Cosmo for us this weekend. Now remember, you only like sparkling water, room temperature. Make Come sure he wears on, a sweater. Let's go. Gotta, gotta go. Go Cougs! Go Cougs! Go Cougs! Come on, Cosmo. All righty. All right, sweetheart. We are going to go see you again. Let's go. There's competition in all things on the field, just trying to compete at, at your own position for the defense. I can hold my own. The BYU TV Sports Game Day Replay. Boise State versus BYU. Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Mountain on BYU TV. Balance restore. I'm supposed to look super hot. <laughs> We've got you covered Friday on the radio and television, BYU Radio and BYU TV, 6.15 Mountain Time, 8.15 Eastern for our radio pregame show coverage to begin. Right at 9 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Mountain. Turn it over to BYU TV and the C2K crew. Countdown to kickoff, then the game just after 8.15 on Friday night. BYU home to Boise State. Second straight Friday night game for the Cougars. Uh, Kalani, uh, Friday, Saturday, Thursday, does it matter to you, Friday night games? No, this one's a little different because we went from Friday to Friday, and so um, we used our, you know, our, our Saturday would normally be our Monday in between sessions, just so everybody knows. <laughs> you know, so we, we, we did that, and, and, and we're able to put the game away and move on and get a jump start on, on Boise, who had a bye, so we had to get, get going right away, and, and we felt really good about our prep this, this week, and... So th that helps out and being on the same schedule from Friday to Friday. So we had all seven days to prepare, uh, minus the one that we take off on the Sabbath. Now, because uh, they're coming off a bye, maybe you expect the unexpected, which you always do with Boise anyway, right? Yeah, I mean, they, they keep you on, uh, you know, for a lot of what they do, and when they have extra time, they, they do a lot of things on defense and offense that, um, that just keeps you guessing at times. So you really have to be assignment sound and then, on special teams is where they they do a lot of trick things and so uh, you know we've been preparing for a lot of the things that we've seen them do throughout the years and uh, you know we just have to be we should be aware and then know what's coming up well best of luck against the Broncos Friday night we look forward to it let's go thank you very much all right fans if you like what you see in Studio C we'd love to have you join Kalani and me next Tuesday night to request your seats go to BYUCougars.com slash Satake show Monday at 1 o'clock Eastern so you can be in next Tuesday night show that's how you get your spot in the audience. We'll talk to you next Tuesday, 8 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Mountain. For Travis Tonga, Kalani Satake, I'm Greg Rubel. This has been BYU Football with Kalani Satake live from Studio C. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. Come on, folks. I try not to let my disability let me down or affect me in any way. Max. Nice pranks. I would have wasted all my days in a dream. Will Rubio in the flesh. Mm. I know you'll always be. I 
have never been so shocked in my life. <laughs> stop to wonder if you might be. And now you're lying to me. That is our show, ladies and gentlemen. understand that I have pressure from the outside world. I'm not going to defend the gold medal, I'm going there. To turn up to the games in front of that start wand, know that I've done absolutely everything that I possibly can in my power to get the results that we deserve. Adam Hall, the defending Paralympic slalom gold medalist. Ski racing is still ski racing, it's the fastest guy that goes home with the gold medal at the end of the day. Ski racing is not always pretty, but it's always exciting. But he still wins it! Unbelievable! Well, we're just heading up the mountain uh, again. Uh, another day at my office, so to speak. Yeah. Another day in paradise. At home in Wanaka, the training started all over again. One gold wasn't enough. I'm a professional in what I do. Uh, it's basically my job, it's my full-time job. I probably work two to three times harder than any full-time employee. So basically what I do, I do it for free. I do it for the love and the passion. Adam competes as a para-alpine skier in the standing classification. Athletes in this division have impairments in both legs. I have a uh, spinal bifida and my level is L5S1. Basically at birth you're born with a hole in the back. Spine isn't formed um, or developed um, normally uh, and therefore depending on that depends on the level of your movement so I'm reasonably lucky to be able to have the movements that I do have. So I fall over all the time so um, I know what I'm doing I suppose when I fall over just to go with the flow. As Adam developed his skills, it was his mum Gail who drove him. She knows how hard he has to work to get to the top. The first year of his life was lots of operations. He had surgery only when he was 14 hours old. And that was to close over the, the defect in his back where the spina bifida was. He then had to have a shunt put into his skull, which was just to drain the fluid around the outside of his brain back into his body. Had to have some surgery on his ankle when he was about two and a half to straighten it so he could walk. Yeah, as time went on, the operations got less and um, he started doing things that we probably didn't expect that he would um, and certainly never imagined in a million years he'd be doing what he's doing now. If others doubted Adam's potential, Gail never did. When he first went to school, he would just participate in all physical sports like the rest of the kids and would be seen to be hanging out on the basketball court doing hoops, but perfecting it all the time. Well, I kind of knew then that if we could maintain his health and his self-esteem, that he would be able to achieve in a sport. But he particularly achieved in areas where he wanted to go fast. And I'd like to... I competed against 